Welcome to Explore Schools of Brooklyn. This is what they're all about. We provide our students with the academic skills and critical thinking abilities they need to succeed in a college preparatory high school. And with me are, are our presenters. There are two principals and I'll allow them, I'll allow them. Please introduce yourselves, um, Lakeisha George and Jonathan Carrington. Good evening, welcome families. I am Lakeisha George, the principal of Exceed Lower. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We are grateful to have you here and so glad you chose to join us. Good evening, families. Good evening, everyone who is here. Definitely happy to have everyone here as part of this webinar so we can learn a lot about this, our, our network being Explore Schools. Uh, my name is Jonathan Carrington. I am the proud principal of Empower Lower Charter School in Brooklyn, New York. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us. Can't wait to tell you guys all about our network and all about our amazing schools. And I know I have Jonathan and Lakeisha's bios up here, but we're also joined by Maureen Ferry, who's on the screen, and, and I'll have her introduce herself as well. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name's Maureen Ferry. I'm the principal at Exceed Upper School. And the most of this presentation is going to be focused on elementary schools. But if anybody has questions about middle schools, I'd be happy to answer those as well. Great to be here. Fantastic. And again, thank you so much for being part of this, everyone who's joining, and to our panelists as well. This is a part of the Schneps Media's webinar series, and I'm Sky. I work with Schneps Media. We publish over 70 newspapers in the New York regional area covering Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Bronx, Westchester, Long Island, Philadelphia. This webinar is being recorded, and you can find it on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Schneps Media. So, We'll dive into it with our principals here. This is an agenda of what we're going to cover during this webinar. And we'll, so we did the panelist introductions. We'll talk about the characteristics of a strong elementary school program, about the Explore Schools of Brooklyn, their academic program and the school culture. And one of the questions a lot of parents may have on their mind is what do you look for when you're choosing an elementary school program? And I'll turn it over to the principals to, to discuss that. Thank you so much. So for me, I, I, I'm a principal and I'm also a parent. So this question, I have two different lenses and at, at the heart for me, it's really what the school believes about, about learning. Um, and they're, they're, they're thinking about children that um, is important to me because I do believe that it's important that we believe in our children and, we, and we're able to use that to then create our academic program. Some additional things I look for is the relationships that the, the teachers, um, leaders have with children and family as building relationships and partnering. That partnership is, is key because children are individuals. So although you may have a program, it needs to be catered to individual children. I, I also think about the exposure, like what are the rich opportunities that scholars have the opportunity to engage in? And, and, and if the school is teaching the whole child beyond, you know, just a classroom, what are some other things that the school is offering so that that development of a child is front and center? And it's super important to me that the school is centered around, their thinking is centered around children and children first and, and their experience um, in school. I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Jonathan, to add on a few more items. Yes, definitely one of the things that all families should look for in elementary school is how the school is engaging families. You wanna make sure that there's a level of partnership that is happening between the family and the school. So through the school's website, through PTA meetings, through operations and leaders being accessible, we wanna make sure that with the saying, it takes a village, well, especially now with the variety of things that students can get into, it is that much more important that the school and families work as one so we can collaborate, we can work together, we can support each other, we can share resources in order for all of the things that we are doing to be in service of your child. In addition, we wanna make sure that there are, as Lakeisha says, ways that we can teach and support the entire child. At both of our respective schools, we have a number of different enrichment opportunities that our schools offer, specifically with Empower, for music, to dance, to science, to physical education, 
to social studies, which we call knowledge added power, and in all of our explore elementary schools, we want to make sure that we're cre creating a variety of different opportunities for our students. Specifically at Explore, we're in the process of creating our own after school program. But in addition, we also have partnerships with close by organizations like Brooklyn United, Friends of Crown Heights. So there are other after school opportunities that we have for your child. So with the work that we're doing at our school and the partnership that we're developing in families, one of the things that we are extremely proud of at Explore Schools is that how diverse of opportunities students families have with having their children come to our school. So if you're looking for an elementary school, you've definitely found the right one with Explore Schools. So I'll go to the slide here that shows your community and I'll let you speak to the different networks of schools that you have. I'd like to start off at, as I mentioned, Explore Schools is located on 188 Rochester Avenue. One of the great things about Explore Schools is that all of our schools are located in Brooklyn with us being in Crown Heights and Lakeisha being a little bit of a walk, but not too far from us at Exceed uh, Charter School in uh, on St. Mark's Avenue. We also have Explore Charter School Elementary and Middle School that's located on Parkside Avenue in Flatbush and Excel Charter School, our elementary and middle school is located in the Crown Heights area. So all of our schools encompass all of Brooklyn. This is another slide about the different, you mentioned Excel, Exceed, Empower, and Explore. Explore. Yes, indeed, those are our four. And for families to know, Empower, let's take Empower, we're Empower Lower, which is kindergarten through fifth grade. And then we have Empower Upper, which is sixth grade through eighth grade. And all of our four schools follow similar models with the lower school being elementary school and the upper schools being the middle school. So now everyone who's participating, we have a question for you, parents, as you consider a school for your child, what's most important to you in a school community? And don't be shy, you can use the chat feature, the Q&A feature below to tell us what's most important to you in a school community. We have a shy audience. <laughs> But Jonathan and Lakeisha, why don't you tell us what you've heard from some parents when they come to you and they're considering sending their child to your school over another school? How do you explain this question and answer what's most important to you that maybe can align with parents out there? Absolutely. For me, families have named the teachers in the classroom access to, to the teachers. They really want to have access and, and, and have partnerships. And those types of things are super important. They think about safety. Families want to, you know, make sure that their, their baby is safe when they turn them over to us at 740 in the morning and, and until they, they come home. Um, and, and something that's really important is for us to communicate with them, like tell them what's going on, what is happening with my child in school. Communication is really big for families, um, especially during these times where school has been remote and, and learning looks different. So those are some of the pieces that families have shared. And they also, you know, lunch, those things are important after school programs because it, families also need to uh, make sure their child is looked for not only just in the morning, but in the afternoon as well. So having that after school program that is well round, rounded and a part of what the school is doing, that homework help has been key, really, really being able to provide some homework help and tutoring are some important things um, I found families have shared with me. And to add on, one of the things that I've noticed is important to families that they've directly communicated is that they will like the school to look like a reflection of their family and or their community. So specifically when it comes to leadership's team having a number of people of color, that's a reflection of the school community from the, our staff having a large percentage of people of color and women, I think, especially from the elementary perspective as men, because we do not generally speaking have a lot of men on the elementary side. So I know specifically at Empower, we do have a number of men who are uh, as part of our community. So I think making sure that the school is a reflection of the community and in speaking of the community, the school is doing specific tangible things in the community. We don't want our school to just be a building in the community. It needs to represent the community. So one of the great things we had at Explore Schools that we do every year is our Welcome Back Barbecue, where we invite all members of our community to come to our school for an event to kick off the school year 
And there's a number of cultural elements in Brooklyn and a number of our schools from field trips to different partnerships that we have. We wanna make sure that there's a consistent effort to connect the school with the community as a whole. And how large are your class sizes? And um, someone has a question about student to teacher ratio. Absolutely. So we we pride ourselves actually on our model because we do have a co-teaching model. And what that means, there are two educators in the classroom to support scholars. So on average, our ratio is one educator to 15 scholars. We also have learning specialists who also come in and either push in and or push out to provide services as well. So something that we also leverage is that co-teaching model because it really allows us to pull frequently pull small groups. And one thing we know is when you have small groups, you're able to pay closer attention to learning needs, to social habits, and, and really provide instruction in a targeted way that having really large class sizes just doesn't allow for. So on average, thinking about that co-teaching model and two teachers in the classroom, and we also have additional team members who pull scholars out and or push in to provide services. I think it's sweet to call the kids scholars. <laughs> so the next slide really is about the test proficiency. I'm, I'm sure parents have asked what is, how do you score compared to other schools? Well, I think uh, one of the great things about the New York State test is that it is just um, a, an example of the level of proficiency that students can have on a, in a particular grade. But I think in addition to our improving test scores, one of the great things that we do is that, thank you, uh, Ms. Aronson, when it comes to 15% more than the city and state, but we also make an effort to support the entire child because it's great that your child could do well on the test, but what is the school doing to develop your child to be a young man and a young woman as they grow up? So in addition to our improving and our outperforming test scores, one of the things that I would say that I'm extremely proud of in this network is the consistent effort from network level to schools, to families that we do to make sure that we are developing the whole child. So when it comes to our culture team, reaching out, supporting families, providing resources, when it comes to our effort as a school for not only having our students learn the specific things they're learning in the classroom, but also have a level of responsibility for us to have with this knowledge, what are we doing with it? What, what can we take this knowledge and how can we improve our community? How are we taking this knowledge and reaching out and helping students who are younger than us so they can develop and become better, um, better individuals and stronger contributors to our world as a whole? So in addition to our improving and outperforming test scores, one of the great things that we really do well at Explore is making sure that we're doing more than just having your student do well on the test. We're developing them to be good people, to be great people, so they can contribute to our world moving forward. No, it sounds beautiful when you describe the whole child and it's very holistic and it sounds very nurturing. Is there anything else you want to add about what you do specifically to, to grow this whole child? Absolutely. As Jonathan mentioned, what we're doing with the knowledge is important to us. And so some places, some things that we do to grow the whole, whole child is we have we have, meet, we have morning meetings. We have things inside of our instructional program where we, we talk to our kids there, they're human, and they engage in conversations with each other. We provide spaces for them to become friends, for them to advocate, for them to critically build on the thinking of their peers. We have habits inside of our learning environments that pushes our children to, like Mr. Carrington said, not just focus on an exam, but to really think about who you are. What is your perception of it? How does it impact your community? What about your history? What's gonna be different for you and your experience? So there's really this idea of your experience and it's moving away from just that test score because it's about your experience and how are you growing as a person, as a learner, as a community member to really impact your life and to change the world. So in us 
catering to the whole child. We provide experiences for them that allow them to exercise different muscles. It's not just a paper and pencil circle in the bubble. You got to defend your, your answer choice. You got to talk about it. You got to defend it. You got to also engage in listening. You got to evaluate what someone else said and be thinking about what that person is saying. We also provide them with the opportunities of enrichment where we are doing other things outside of a state exam or other content areas where art is thought about in a different way and they're they're able to have that kind of exposure we also know that there's that social emotional learning that is key right like if i'm upset today because of something what you have in front of me is not on my mind principal george like I need to process this with someone. That is key. We give them skills to be able to say, I am upset. This happened to me. We support them in advocating for themselves and give them spaces to, to it's okay that you're mad. You can absolutely be mad. That is okay. You were human. And we really push them to be aware of their emotions and think about how it's impacting them and then help them think through, well, what can we do? How can we change things? How can we learn from this? So that idea of the whole child, not just this paper and pencil thing in front of them, because we want them to go beyond and, and reach their fullest potential. And we know that takes being well-rounded. It sounds like a whole nother type of learning than when I went to school, you know, <laughs> now there's mental health, there's all kinds of cultural sensitivities. There's everything you're talking about that happens at home too, that's carried through in the school. So it's great to hear that to have a staff that supports those needs from the students. And I know this next slide is about high school placement. And I, um, someone was asking, what's the oldest level of students that you have since the school was founded pretty recently? How old are the, like, what's the oldest class now? What grade are they in? I think they're grown-ups by now. They are grown-ups. They, <laughs> they are grown-ups. Go ahead, Maureen. You can yeah. absolutely. Go yeah. Ahead. So yeah. our oldest kids are in their 20s. And so they're, they've finished college. We actually have some teachers in our schools who are graduates of our first school. Really? Um, which the original school. Yeah. The original school is Explore. It was founded in 2002. Um, and so, yeah, our our graduates are and alumni are doing really amazing things and attending um, really excellent high schools around the city and then colleges and now are some summer in the workforce. And I want to add on to that they also returned to us as interns like I had a few interns join me this past summer so uh, we are excited about them but just wanted to share that because a part of this it's a journey and although we only go up to eighth grade really seeing and following our scholars through. We, we have really beautiful sessions. Well, pre-COVID when we were in person, we would be able to see some of them come back and talk to us about their experience here. So um, that has been a pleasure as well. And while we have you here, Maureen, to talk about middle school and into high school, is there anything you wanna add as far as that process with help working with parents to place child in high school? Absolutely. So the high school placement process can be really daunting for a middle school child and family. It is not an easy process, but we have a staff member at all of our schools whose whole job is dedicated to working directly with families to make sure that their child has a strong application, that they've identified the 12 schools that, they, that are a good fit for that child and for the family and also make sure that they have access to other kinds of schools. If they're interested in exploring independent schools or other charter schools, the high school placement coordinator starts working with families and kids as early as sixth grade, and then really starts going, working really closely with families in seventh and eighth grade to partner with them to make sure that their kid gets into an amazing high school. And again, audience, if anyone has any questions for our panelists here, please don't be shy and use the chat and Q&A function to ask any questions that you have from our educators here. So this slide is about the academic program. Should we dive into the actual academics? Most definitely. So as we've mentioned before, we want to make sure that we are developing the whole child. It's great that students could do well in the test, but you want them, you want your child to be a good person. 
And it's one of the things in our academic program, as Lakeisha mentioned, when it comes to morning meeting, our social emotional opportunities, where we have our school counselors who can push into classrooms to facilitate meetings to help students learn when it comes to their emotional, emotional regulation, and be able to highlight specific things, especially for our older fourth and fifth grade students about certain things that they'll need to learn and understand as they develop and grow. At all of our respective schools, we also have something called Community Circle, when um, we come together as a community and learn about our school values and highlight specific things that are happening in our school community. So at Explore School, since it is a charter school, we do have a longer school day where traditional schools may end around two o'clock at our respective schools. We go until at least 3.30 and our day begins roughly around eight o'clock. As Lakeisha mentioned before that we do have a co-teaching model. So we will have multiple teachers in each classroom in order to differentiate and provide a level of support to all students. As I mentioned before, we do have our core classes of math and reading and science, but also we do have a variety of different enrichment programs that are emphasized just as much as academic programs where you may have a math block that is 45 minutes. Your child's science or dance or music block will also be that the same amount. Your child will receive a grade when it comes to their proficiency in math and reading they'll also receive a grade when it comes to their proficiency in gym and music as well. In addition, one of the great things that we really pride ourselves on is that with the two teaching model, we can really differentiate instruction. So you can walk into any one of our classrooms, you'll see one teacher working with a group of students, you'll see another teacher working on a similar skill set, but then that particular activity may be differentiated for the particular skills of that group. So if you come, if your child comes to explore schools, you will know and you can trust that we'll be providing opportunities that will be specific for your learning needs of your, of your child. And we'll do any and everything we can to gather all the data, reach out to you as a family to learn things that work well, things that we need to incorporate in our instructional program. So we're able to provide your child with the best level of education as we can. In addition, all of our schools have a variety of different special education services from uh, physical therapy to occupational therapy, and all of our grades will have at least one classroom that's designated as an integrated co-teaching model. And Lakeisha could speak a little bit more about her school because they have different learning opportunities that they could provide students at her school. Absolutely. So one thing we believe in and what we love about our children is that they're different. And that's what makes us unique. And at Exceed Lower, we do have we do provide learning for scholars who may have a 1211 setting, which is a setting inside of a special education um, classroom where we are able to provide additional support for scholars with a variety of, of learning needs. That is a setting that isn't any and everywhere. And we are proud of it because it really speaks to what we believe about children. They're individuals. They are, they are, they're brilliant and they have different learning needs and that is okay. And we have expertise to support them in reaching their highest potential. And we know sometimes the setting makes a difference. And that is something that we really do pride ourselves on because being known and loved at Explore Schools isn't really important to us and us really thinking about how we are creating a learning environment for individual little people because they're they're super important to us. Um, so we are excited about that program. And I have this slide up with the overview of the school day, which you each just touched on to give families an idea of what this entails. And there's another one here about the academic program and how you mentioned the school day is a little bit longer. And I'm wondering if you can compare your schedule to that of a public school or of that of other charter schools that you may be familiar with their schedule to give families an idea of the difference? Absolutely. So, although I want to preface it, we don't know all the schedule of all the, of all the, you know, other traditional public schools. We are a public school as well. One thing we do know that's different is that we do provide our scholars with an early start right? Our babies are coming to us at 740. And that is earlier. And we also have a later, um, a later end time, as well as a longer year, a longer school year. Additionally, inside of the academic day, we offer different opportunities for targeted targeted instruction based on data. So they're just not your core 
instructional blocks for like reading. We look at the data and we provide targeted instruction for scholars at different levels. And we also have opportunities for two different types of enrichment in one day, which is really nice. Um, some scholars experience PE in the morning and then art in the afternoon. And not all programs have that duality, which we are really excited to be able to offer to our families. We do have the traditional lunch and, and recess times as well. Um, and our morning meeting is something that we pride ourselves on because it really is geared to social emotional learning. So it's not just about, hi, here's the agenda for the day. Are you ready to learn? We're, we're talking about issues. We spoke about the pandemic. We spoke about um, shooting and when we, 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 we kids made posters in the art class in relation to it. So it's real conversation. It's real space. And we get to unpack and get to know each other, which I don't know that all schools are doing because when it comes to those subjects, not all schools are, are having those types of conversations. But for us, we do believe in that diversity, equity, and inclusion and, and, and having our ch children have the knowledge so they can advocate for themselves and know what's going on in the world so they can make decisions, um, positive decisions as well. So I would say those are some ways our program is different in comparison to other schools. And if I was to jump in quickly, I'll also say that we have fun at our schools um, from field day, to um, we will have different themes like last month, last month was bullying awareness month. So we had an entire week that was focused on bullying awareness, where even though we have uniforms that we wear each and every day, we will have different themed weeks where students can come dress as a particular theme. We will have spirit week. So there'll be a riot of different fun activities that we had for our students in celebration of not necessarily Halloween, but we called it Book Character Day, where students came to school dressed as their favorite book character. We were able to have a book character parade where students went up and down our hallways as their favorite book character and was cheered on by other students. We also had the opportunity to go down to our upper school, our upper school students in the hallway cheering students on. So in addition to the academics, we wanna make sure that kids are being kids and they're having a good time in school and having fun. So in addition to the rigorous academic program that your child will have, if they choose to come to explore schools, you also know that your child will come into school with a smile on his or her face, have a smile on their face throughout the day and come to you at dismissal with a big smile because your child can only learn by how to ball doing it. Excellent. And I know this slide here talks about some of the support services. And you mentioned even the issue of gun violence and taking that up with the students. And I'm sure maybe that comes up in some of these specialized programs you have here. Yeah, I, I do want to uh, speak on especially our amazing school counselors that we have in all of our respective schools where we really take the time to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with students who may be going through a variety of different things. We will have a lunch bunch where our guidance counselor will pull a number of students and work with them to focus on um, identifying a particular lagging skill and then work with students to collaborate to come up with different skills and things that they can do in order to grow and be better individuals. We have girls and boys empowerment groups that we either have at our school that we're beginning them. So we really want to make an effort to provide support in a variety of different ways. We can send our families resources. We have a family fund. If families are going through difficult times, I have personally gone into different households, especially during remote learning, set up hotspots, bringing families food bringing families clothes. We want to make sure that like as a community where it says it takes a village, it generally takes a village. And we want to make sure that as a community, we are all doing our part to provide differentiated academic support, as well as making sure we're providing resources and at least as being a shoulder to cry on, someone to hug, especially if things are going um, maybe not in the direction that you want, but we're a family here and explore and we do any and everything that we can to make sure that you as a family feel that you have another family with us as a school. And someone's asking if your classes are back 100% in person or if you're still working remotely at all. We are back in 100%. Um, inside of our classrooms. We are excited about that and, and are really happy to be in person while remote instruction was something we had to do. And we learned really great things, tools we're still using. We are fully 100% back in person. And then speaking of being back in person, you may be thinking when it comes to our COVID safety precautions, we are 100% mask on all throughout the day when we were in the school. Students are 
three feet apart. There are sanitizer stations in every one of our hallways. There's sanitizer, wipes. Um, we have protective screens that we can use to uh, provide an additional layer of support. So one of the things we wanna make sure that we uh, communicate is not only that your, your child will have an academic rigorous program, not only will they have fun, but they'll also be safe because we want to make sure we're prioritizing safety throughout our entire school buildings, especially when it comes to being in school during COVID. We had, we have had classroom closures. We have had whole grade closures, but we were able to communicate with families what the situation is happening, provide laptops to all of our students. All of our students across all of our schools have one-to-one -one, um, laptops. As we have in the chat, we do have on-site weekly COVID testing. We have had um, vaccine shots that were available for families today at our at my respective school. It's happening at other schools. So support also comes with safety. So you know as a family, when your child comes to our school, we are doing any and everything we can to ensure that your child is learning and they're safe. Beautiful. And here we have more about your school culture. School values. Okay, let's hear what these acronyms stand for. All right, I'm going to jump in here. Uh, we we rise up at Exceed Lower. We are super excited for us. We build in our core values in everything that we do. The R is for respect. Um, we treat others the way they want to be treated. Sometimes you hear the way you want to treat them, but the way they want to be treated, we have integrity, we do the right thing, even when no one is looking because we're capable of that. Um, we have self-discipline, that means we're practicing mindful control of our feelings and our impulses so we can make the best decisions for ourselves and our community. And these for excellence, we strive to do our best every single day and to keep getting better every single day because that is, that is what we believe in. And for us, our values doesn't mean perfection at all, it means who we are at the core because we know we're teaching children and they're growing and as adults, it's our responsibility to support them in that development. So we use language that they can work towards and language that they also have at home. Respect is in the, in the family. Those are words that they use at home and words that they know. And we wanna make sure that our values, we give our scholars, although we have our core values, whenever we set up our classrooms, there's spaces for scholars to chime in. What else is important to you? What are some things that we want that you might want to add to this classroom and learning community? So just want to make sure that 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 is important because although we have our core values, our scholars have voice and we add things on in service of building that school culture and that positive community. A little bit about our school culture at Exceed Lower. Um, Jonathan mentioned it and it is that joy factor. Like I keep smiling because I think about Exceed, you know, as I'm sharing and it is joyful. And sometimes I forget like, oh, you're the principal. Yeah, it's, it's fun Friday. Like I'm in the thing. I'm doing the thing too, because it's exciting. And our scholars that, that we know when children want to learn and when they're joyful, they're learning. And that is key to our culture. It's not create the joy this one time. No, it is a part of what we do in reading, writing, math, lunch. That joy is a, is, is a fabric in our school culture. And then really thinking about rigorous learning, like rigorous is like we're, we're having fun and we're going to challenge you. I'm not going to take anything at face value. I want you to do the thinking. I want you to share with me why you are choosing that response or why you are agreeing with your, with your, with your partner and we want to build that level of, you guys have that conversation, right? And I'm stepping out as the facilitator of learning to allow you guys to have a discussion and or build on each other's thinking. Also at um, Explore, we we believe in community. COVID has, you know, we, we've been forced to rethink it and, and not all things were, we were able to do in person, but we've had lots of virtual things pre-COVID, but that idea of community is big. We do believe it takes a village. We believe enjoying who you are with kids, children learn through and with and from each other. And we do believe that it takes a village. So having events for us to get to know each other, to build a partnership, having events for children to get to know each other and have partnerships is 
is key to us. And we, we like to have those activities to learn about our children and see them in ways outside of the classroom because you get to learn about who they are. You get to learn their interests. And then you can bring that in the classroom and bring the reality of whatever we're learning and make some of those connections. So our school culture, it's important. And one thing I can say is that we know our children need different things at different times. And that is important for us. It's not a one way and that's it. We have expectations. We hold our scholars accountable. And we know that children need different things at different times. And we put in the work to make sure that we, we build those partnerships to maintain strong relationships, positive relationships, and, and safe learning environments. Going to pass it over to Jonathan for him to share some, some more about Empower. Got it. Um, and empower, we are the empower world. So we move as a pack, we move as a movement. So that is why we have our pack values. Our first letter for P is perseverance. We understand that in life, there will be obstacles that you need to work through. And in any and everything that you want in life, anything that you want is on the other side of hard. So you have to be able to persevere and work through those things in order to reach whatever level of goals you have set for yourself. And speaking of goals, the, our A is for ambition. So we want our students to be able to dream big. And if your dreams don't scare you, your dreams aren't big enough. So we want our students to make sure they set ambitious goals and do their due, do their due diligence in order to work as a collective group to reach those goals. And when it comes to working as a collective group, we really wanna make sure that our C highlights community because we know, especially as a school where the majority of black and brown students, we need to make sure that we are working together as one because if we are all collectively working together and striving towards our goals, we all can succeed. And then we all can work as a community if we are showing kindness to each other. And that represents our K is that as we said throughout this presentation, we want to make sure that we're developing the entire child. And you want your child to be a good person. And in order to be a good person, we have to develop the skill of being kind, especially in the social media world where we can say anything that we want. We want to make sure, especially with our younger students, they are developing ability to really know how important it is as we work as a community to be kind and thoughtful to one another. And our last S is for self-control where we want to, and I'll speak in the past tense and I'll highlight the reason why, we want our students to really be able to have self-control over their emotions. But I think now, especially in the world that we are living in now, especially after COVID or during COVID because it's still happening, we took a moment to really reflect on the particular things that we were asking our black and brown students to do. And we acknowledge and recognize that some of the things that we are asking students to do and asking staff to do, to put it bluntly, has elements of white supremacy culture embedded into it. So one of the things we wanted to make sure that we highlighted coming back into the school building is that we thoroughly looked at all of our systems and structures to make sure all, all the things we putting in place, setting up our black and brown children for success. And one of the things that we wanted to highlight is that should we really focus on the self-control of a five-year-old or are there other things that we really need to emphasize and focus our time and energy towards? We was able to um, um, gather as a community, students, families, and our staff, and we felt it was best for our upper and lower schools if we drop the S when it comes to our PAC values and just be known as PAC. So it's perseverance, ambition, community, and kindness, and that is just one of the aspects I think that really separates Explore Schools from other schools is that we are really taking the effort to have a critical eye on the specific things that we are doing as a community when it comes to working with Black and Brown students. And if there are anything that we have done that could potentially mirror and have some elements of white supremacy culture, we are just not doing it. And we're coming up with better ways to support our Black and Brown students each and every day. And this is, like you mentioned, it's a lot for young kids. It's a great way to, you know, they're sponges. So we immerse them in all kinds of learning. And I'm wondering, Maureen, what part of this culture carries through into the middle school? Maybe when kids can understand a lot of these things better, but they're used to hearing it from being so young. Absolutely. So really, all of this carries through. This is the, the spirit of joy, the culture of joy. Is, is what we create and what we aspire to create, what we build with kids in middle school as well. Um, at Exceed Upper and across our middle schools, we have um, Thursdays in morning meeting dedicated to, we call it Thursdays are for the culture. 
And it's where we talk about what's going on in the world and, you know, what's going, what, 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 um, what topics are, are kids, we know kids are hearing about it. Kids are more connected and have access to more information than ever before. And so we talk about it. And sometimes it's tough conversations and it's sometimes it's conversations that maybe you wouldn't expect 11 year olds to talk about, but we know that they're talking about it themselves if, if we don't bring it up at school. And so we do bring it up at school. Um, something else we have at Exceed Upper is a period every week called Genius Hour. And that's when kids get to explore their genius in something that's not necessarily related to their academic content. And so that could be something like Black History, that could be pod, creating a podcast, we have kids painting, musical theater. And so it is, it is their choice what they want to explore during that time. And yeah, that's a little bit about what we offer in upper schools. It sounds like I wanna come back to school actually. <laughs> You're welcome to come visit. We'd love to have you. Thank you. And I see Janelle Samuel from Empower Upper is here and I didn't wanna ignore her, but she's here. So is there anything you wanted to add to this conversation, Janelle? Um, not much. I agree with everything that Jonathan and Lakeisha and Maureen have said. Um, I guess I would just want to stamp that at Explore Schools, we understand that school culture is like the foundation for learning, right? If kids don't feel safe and they don't feel happy and respected, it makes it really, really difficult for them to learn. And so that's why that we work so hard to prioritize that. Thank you. And I know this slide mentioned your trips and activities. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about some of these extracurricular opportunities that you have available to your students. Well, I think um, COVID kind of put a cramp in a number of the things that we would generally like to do with our students, but we're slowly getting back to where we need to have making sure that our students learning isn't encapsulated by the worksheet or the book that they've had. We want to make sure that we're, we're getting students outside of our school building. Specifically, our school is located, as I mentioned, in Crown Heights. There's the uh, Wheatville Heritage Center that is in walking distance from our school. Our students will spend an, a, a decent amount of time throughout the school year, be able to go to that Wheatville Heritage Center in order to learn aspects about their culture and their community that they have not been exposed to before. So I think we strongly encourage, especially now since the COVID restrictions are starting to ease up for our students to be able to get outside of their building and experience different things that they may not have been experienced to before. For example, in fifth grade, we're reading the book Esperanza Rising and we're learning about um, different human rights um, I forget the name of the document, it slips on my mind right now, but different human rights that um, may be challenging to different communities out there. One of the things that we are working towards is having a field trip to the United Nations so we can see a lot of the things that we are learning about in our story to really connect what we're doing in school and really developing our level of awareness for what's happening outside of our school building and potentially what's happening outside of our present community because that level of knowledge and exposure is the things that's gonna help our students develop when it comes to working with and encouraging the development of the entire child. Again, the idea of the entire child, I love it because I've never heard that phrase before. <laughs> I wonder how you work with parents maybe who can't grasp this concept, right? The way that you describe education is in this, in this beautiful, picturesque way. And I'm wondering, and I know the next slide here is about the family school partnership. So can you talk a little bit about working with parents and families and making sure that the things that children learn in school or the scholars that they're learning in school, that these items are carried through in home life, because I'm sure you've encountered situations where it is very different. Absolutely. For, for us, we are, we're big on that partnership. Um, like I mentioned earlier, when families leave their children with us, we take pride in that. And we also know that it, the learning really starts at home. They're coming to us when they're five. Families are um, our children first teachers. So that 
partnership is key and families know their children and we need that. We need that. Um, so we really take the time to get to know children through their families. Cause even though you might have a five-year-old or a four-year-old soon to be five, it's the family, it's, it's the guardians, it's the person that has been there. So we provide different opportunities virtually in the past because of COVID, but we also have meet the principal or principal coffee and conversation. It's been a lot of conversation and no coffee because of COVID, but we do take that time to open it up and have families be able to share and express themselves. What do they want in the school? What are some ideas that they have? Because again, that key information that family is bringing to us we know it's gonna help us make a better school. So we welcome, we welcome partnerships. We welcome that feedback. We also provide space for families to get together. Different schools might have different things, a PTA, a PTO, but ultimately the idea of really being able to provide families with a space to come together to do what they think is best for children and specifically their children in the school because our children are unique to us. We have, family teacher conferences where we get to have real conversations and not just only then, but we do have real conversations with families about children, academics, um, thinking about where they wanna go, especially when you're transitioning from our high school, our, excuse me, middle schools to high school. We have various ways to stay in touch. We use Parent Square. We um, provide email, phone, um, paper and pencil. We revisit homes as well when necessary because it's key that we are trusted and, and there's a strong relationship. We also, one thing that may be unique to our organization is that we do have a parent advisory committee where they're able to bring their ideas to not just principals, but beyond to our organizational level where they meet and talk about things like COVID and the reopening. So those are places that parent voices key to us because we believe in our families and we know that they want what's best and we know when we partner with them we're going to get that ideal situation and regardless of what we're presented it presented with excuse me we're going to be able to tackle it because we have that partnership um monthly newsletters schools are different so some do monthly some do weekly some do paper copy some do digital we also engage in events like jonathan said it's COVID has put a little cramp in what we do, but families, I've had yoga session virtual with families, you know, to de-stress because you're with your kids all day. Um, and so we definitely cater. We have a few parent workshops coming up. So we do cater to not just the child, but to also that family, that parent, um, because those pieces are important to us. And we believe in that family structure and everyone being on the same page and bringing ideas together to do what's best for our scholars. Did I cover it all, Jonathan? Anything you want to add? <laughs> you got it all. Well said. I think just to highlight that it, it takes a village and we want to make sure, especially as families, where you will have great insight. Someone like when we had remote learning, we had parents come up with great ideas that we can do remotely that were amazing. Like we had a, a remote spelling bee. That was an idea from a parent who was able to put it right into the chat. We had a multicultural potluck. We've had field day, movie and discussion night. There's a variety of different things that our families come up and share with us. Also, they may say, hey, I want to learn more about how I could support my child with remote learning. We took that information. And then we came up with the remote PD where we were walking parents through the different tools and techniques that they need to be aware of when it comes to supporting um, their child. So I'm not sure how other networks may do it, but I think especially during COVID and then afterward, we had really taken it a step up and really improved and strengthened our family and school partnerships. Beautiful. And I want to remind our audience, if you have any questions for our principals here while you're live in our audience, please type them in. But what I want to ask next as we round out this discussion is, what is the enrollment process for parents to have their students? You must have a long waiting list, do you not? Well, we definitely are a popular network and we do have a number of families who would like to um, join our network. So I know specifically when it comes to, you can go right to our website, 
at um, Explore Schools, and then you'll be able to follow the link in order to have your child specifically enroll in one of our Explore Schools, but particularly if you are, if you live close to Lakeisha Schools and you like to enroll your child directly in her school, you can reach out directly to any one of our school's um, operations teams, or you can reach out directly to either one of us as principals, and we'll put you in contact with our operations team in order to make sure that you have the best Explore School when it comes to where you live, but you can't go wrong in any of our Explore Schools. As long as you're part of the community, we'll love to have you. Okay. And just to push in that website again, it's exploreschools.org. If you put that backslash and type enrollment, it'll take you right there to that enrollment page. And if you're thinking about emailing us, we accept emails. That would be awesome. I'm L. George at explorenetwork.org. And Jonathan is J. Carrington at explorenetwork.org. Yes. And those emails will be um, posted below the recording of this video so people can reach out to you and visit your website. Do you take students halfway through the year, like after Christmas break? Will you take students in January? We, we, we took, we have, we are taking students this week. We are taking students, anyone, oh. if you have them, we'll definitely have your, your child oh. as part of our community. Rolling admission. Now, what's, what about um, the process to get accepted into the school? I know because you talk about the whole child, I'm sure it's not just a paper pencil test. Well, there so is, oh, go ahead, Lakeisha. Go ahead, Jonathan. <laughs> there, there isn't, because I know when I was going to middle school, I had to take a test. There isn't an actual test that you need to take. As long as they enroll and go through the kindergarten enrollment lottery, if we have availability in our respective grades, by all means, we'll be able to take any one of our students, grade one through eight can apply on a rolling basis anytime throughout the school year. But it's better early than later because we do have a number of families who are interested in our network. So if you're listening to part of this webinar right now, you can go right to the website as soon as we are over and start the process of enrolling your child in Explore Schools. Beautiful. And I want to give our panelists the last minute chance to make any final remarks or takeaway messages that you may have for parents and families who are listening to this webinar about Explore Schools. Absolutely. For me, I would say I'm just going to put in my two cents. I think my favorite part about what we do is really us believing in our scholars. We we do believe that they are geniuses and it's on us to foster and create that learning environment that is gonna help them grow into who they are. And that's important. And we care deeply about our children and their families beyond, beyond school, which is which creates a caring environment that allows children to grow with us. We, we go to all the way up to middle school and that stability is important. And Jonathan said it, we're reflective. It, it, we're not a place where we have all the answers and it's just our way or no other way. We do take that time to think about our impact and places that we can grow and change in service of our children and families. So I just wanted to share that with you because it's important to know that we, we are reflective and we, we, want, we want you to be involved as family members in our school community because your voice is important to us and, and who you are and so are your scholars. And to piggyback, especially when it comes to that reflective aspect for someone for myself where um, this is 15 years for me in schools, specifically in charter schools. And I've been at a couple of different schools and networks where one of the things that I feel that really separates Explore Schools from other schools is that especially since our schools are majority black and brown students, we wanna make sure that we're creating opportunities for black and brown students where we're not policing their bodies. And this is something that I really wanna highlight because I think this is something that really separates us from other networks where other schools, we may sound the same when it comes to different things that we're saying, but in other schools and other networks, your child won't be able to talk as they're walking down the hallway. Your child has to sit with their back super straight as they sit on the rug crisscross applesauce. You'll get called because your child may have a speck of color 
in their sneakers. Like those aren't things where like if your child hand isn't raised all the way up, that could be a demerit or a deduction. It's like, we don't do those things at, at our network where like your child is six, your child is seven. When your child goes away to college and they maybe they'll pledge a fraternity or a sorority, that's when they'll do those kind of things. <laughs> now is it's like, you're, we, we, want our child, we want our children to be children. Like there's only a certain point in their life where your child can be a child. And at Explore Schools, like we run a tight ship. Like I'll speak for Lakeisha and Ms. Samuels. Like your child will make sure, like we're gonna, we're gonna take care of your child in our school, but your child is still a child. And we wanna make sure that when you bring your child to school, your child is not only safe, they're supported, and we're not going to call you for every little thing. We're not going to wag our finger at your child. We're gonna support him or her. We're gonna give your child a particular skills that they will need, but we're not gonna do that in a militant way. We're not gonna scream at children. We're not gonna get in your child's face. Like we're gonna make sure that your child is safe and enjoy being at school. And that is something specific that I think really separates us from other networks where they police black and brown bodies in other networks. I'll directly tell you that. We don't do that here. And I wanna make sure that if you're looking for a school where your child can still be a child, get that longer school day, get rigorous instructions, develop their whole child, you found the place you wanna be and that is at Explore Schools. Thank you so much. I loved hearing what you had to say personally. Like I said, I feel like I want to come back to school. <laughs> so, so thank you. And it looks like we got to a lot of our questions during the course of the conversation. But again, for anyone that didn't get to ask their question, we are posting the contact information of these principals on the bottom of the YouTube video, and you can visit their website, which will also be posted at the bottom of the recording. So, so thank you to our live audience. And thank you so much to our panelists here for your time from Explore Schools and educating us on on your network of schools. Until next time, bye.